All right, we are here at my tiny traveling worm bin, and the last time we were in here, we started a migration, and we are trying to force all the worms over to here by giving them some yummy food. So let me just take this plastic off, and let's see how they did. The first thing I want to do is kind of move the castings around and kind of see how the moisture is doing and see how many worms are in here, and then we'll come over here to the feeding zone and check out how that's doing and see how we want to set it up. And sure enough, as soon as I kind of dig in here, I'm already seeing some fat worms right there and the castings do feel pretty moist so got some work to do there but let me just kind of dig around and see if they are vacating and it's been 15 days since we we're in here so we may find that I need to come in here sooner to try and get the worms out but look at those beautiful red wigglers they are just absolutely gorgeous in here I love how this worm bin is doing now this is a tiny worm bin it is about a shoebox size maybe a men's 12 shoebox size and it has been been started probably five times and gotten castings out of it five times and it seems to be happy with about a thousand worms no matter how many I start with it always ends up with about a thousand and right here I am seeing a baby so and they are replenishing themselves so that's good and yeah it's it's kind of moist down here not too bad I mean I squeeze it together and it sticks together but then it crumbles apart it does feel a little bit more moist than my other bins and the deeper I go and kind of the more kind of clumpy it it is right there and yeah lots of worms so I think that I probably need to set up this feeding zone with a little bit more food and as I get my first peek in there it does look like there's quite a bit of castings so let's keep moving around and just see where they are if they're you know kind of near the feeding zone or are they all throughout and right now to me it's looking like they're all throughout because it's well there's a lot right there. I'm not seeing a whole bunch. Now, I did bring another piece of cardboard in case this is not enough for them or if they break it open. And I think right here, I'm seeing a cocoon. Let me see if I can get it off the fingertip here. A little balancing act. But yeah, right there is a worm cocoon. Let me see if I can get the castings off it. And it's looking pretty dark. So I believe that means it's fairly new. And we've got a tiny baby right there. I forget if it's dark if they're new or if it's light if they're new. But let me go ahead and mix around and we will come back to that feeding zone. So as I'm doing this, I'm finding lots of worms in here. So it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of migrating going on. So I am learning, trying to kind of emulate what AV does with his migrations. And I think the biggest lesson learned from me here is I probably need to get in here once a week. So so what I'm going to do is just kind of pile the castings over here. I'm not even going to worry about maybe trying to help the worms get towards the feeding zone. Let's just try and set this up. And I'm thinking what I want to do long term is continue to move the barrier over to this direction and maybe even, you know, slowly harvest this off each time I check in till this becomes smaller. And then the next thing I know, I've moved this all the way across and I've got a brand new uh, worm bin going. Let me know what you think in the comments if I should do that or if I should should just pull the worms out, harvest, and restart. So this is kind of falling apart, and I am seeing a lot of mites on it as well. Let me see if I can kind of move it back, and I'll just maybe fit the new one in here over it, because clearly they can get through it. It's got lots of holes, and the moisture next to it is helping to let it disintegrate. So there, and it's not really trying to be a barrier. It's just there for me to kind of delineate where are the worms supposed to be, and where are they not supposed to be. So this is the new one I kind of fashioned. Let me see if it fits well enough and I think I think that will do I think we'll take this one out and maybe give it to them in this new expanded feeding zone and I'm going to give them more food and a whole lot more bedding because I want to entice them to come over there and stay over there I'll just set this to the side and if there's any worms on it they will get to come back in all right so we'll just push this over here like that we'll add this one in like that and I'll just kind of backfill from this side here and yeah I like the way that's looking okay let's go in here and see what they've done now I remember from last time that we put in a bunch of shredded cardboard a banana peel some strawberry tops yellow squash that had some caterpillars and so did the cucumbers along with some kale and then we had some remnants from the bin as well as our amendments of you know worm chow coffee grounds and eggshell and then finally we topped it off with some paper towels and napkins and we also 
also put in some of the leaves that we had from our trip to the Blue Ridge Mountains like four or five months ago. And here's an avocado shell that I'm going to put back in, but it's just kind of getting it out of the way. Same there. But this right here feels like some leaves. Yep. I have found that in my bins, the worms will eat the leaves and they will, you know, make them into castings, but at a much slower rate than the cardboard shreds that I put in here. So check it out. There are a bunch of worms in here. This is good. So some have migrated. Some have realized, okay, this is where the food's going to be. And uh, certainly a lot of mites have as well, but things are looking good. We definitely have, I think, density wise, probably more worms per square inch or square centimeter or cubic centimeter, cubic inch of material. Material. So that is good. Perfect. Just like that. Okay. I think right now we can start to go in with some more bedding. We've got a good setup here. I'm happy with kind of the volume that's over here and then what's over here. So I think we're ready to go. So I think we'll start off with that last migration kind of barrier cardboard right there. Just kind of help them break it up a little bit just like that then i'm going to add in a lot of shredded cardboard and you might be able to notice that this time i'm putting damp shredded cardboard in typically for my bins i don't put the shredded cardboard in damp i usually put it in dry and then allow all the frozen food that i put in here to kind of wet it down but because we're in the summertime and the air conditioning is kind of ripping out the humidity i'm finding that i need to add just a little bit of moisture and every time i feed my worm bin i kind of judge the moisture level to see if we need to do something like this. So here's what we had in mind to feed, and I don't think we're going to get to all of it, but I am going to pick out some of the more juicy stuff for them. So we'll throw in an apple and a good cucumber slice there, and then another cucumber slice that it looks like we had cut open and then not gotten to, so it stayed in the refrigerator for a while, so the edges are a little buckled in, but it's still slightly frozen, so I'm having a little bit of trouble breaking it up just with my hands, but I think they will not have a problem getting to it. It's a fan favorite for the worms. And then we've got an assortment of carrots and strawberry tops and a little piece of banana and some lettuce that kind of thing put another little piece of banana right there and a couple more carrots i think that's pretty good for a feeding in fact i think the executive producer probably thinks that's a little too much for a feeding a hundred percent yes but hey, the idea is to try to attract the worms over here and get them to vacate the other side. So we'll do that with a little bit more food. And as you know, I usually tell you, be careful with how much you feed. I usually have four or 5,000 worms in my worm bins. This one only has 1,000. But it's because I'm going to get in here every seven days, I'm not too worried about overfeeding them. It's also a really mature worm bin that has all kinds of bin critters and microbes in it that are going to be able to take that food and you know help the worms turn it into castings. So I put in some worm chow and I put in some used coffee grounds and this is just some eggshell grit that we grind up in our magic bullet blender and it does a great job of getting it almost into a powder form so that the worms can use it in their gizzard. All right, so I'm going to try and do a good job here of covering this feeding zone up with more of this damp shredded cardboard and I probably will top it off with some dry stuff as well. It's always a good idea to make sure your food scraps are completely buried so you don't get any kind of unwanted critters like flies or gnats or fruit flies to be searching out for your bin. All right, here we go to top it off with some dry shred cardboard. And I'm not worried about if we come in here and this is all dry. I'm pretty sure that next time we check in here, we'll be able to mix this underneath and get it wet. So this looks good. It looks like we've got kind of a one third, two third situation here. So I think this will help to let it dry and give us some good castings here. Meanwhile, maybe more of the worms will come here and we'll find less here. So be sure to let me know what do you think we should do? Should we keep migrating this over and slowly harvest this out so that I just automatically have a new worm bin? Or should I just try and get all the worms over here and then pull everything out, harvest this, and then start a brand new worm bin all over again? And if you want to see how I start a new worm bin, check out this video right here. So in we go with the plastic mostly covering this side right here. You know what? Let's do it all just like that. Boom. So I hope you're having a great day. I hope your warm bins are doing well. So happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.